All right, so in this video, we are going to be continuing on with singly linked lists. And specifically, we're going to be focusing on how we can count the number of occurrences of a given node in a linked list for a specific data element in the list. So let's take an example. Let's assume that we have the following linked list given here in this comment. So the nodes, the data elements at each of the nodes in this list are one, two, one, three, one, four, one, respectively. And let's say that we want to figure out how many ones are in this particular example list. So we can go through the list and we can count one, two, three, four, there are four ones in this list. So if we coded up a function to count the number of occurrences of any given element with a particular piece of data, the function in this case should return four since there's four occurrences of the data element one. So I've gone ahead and created a linked list object here and I've populated it in the same way as the example comment here has. So one, two, one, three, one, four, one. And we're going to go ahead and solve this problem using both an iterative and recursive approach. And just as always, I encourage you to try to solve the problem yourself first before tackling this with me, before watching the video. And then if you have any trouble, we can solve it together. So let's first tackle the iterative case. So what we want to do is we want to count the number of times a particular data element occurs in a list. We want to do so in an iterative fashion. So the way that we can do this is we can start a pointer at the head of the list. And then we can move the pointer down the list one by one until we hit the end of it, until we hit null. And all the while what we'll be doing is we'll be checking for each node that we encounter, what is the data element on that node and does it match with the data element that we're given as input to the function. So we'll basically be doing that as our primary approach. So let's go ahead and code that up. So what we're going to do first is we're going to, let's initialize a variable count, which will keep track of the number of occurrences of a particular data element. Uh, I guess I just also want to point out that I've already coded up the prototype of this function for count occurrences iterative. It takes self since it's part of the class we've been working on so far in this video series and also data, which is the data element that we're looking for in this list. So again, I'm initializing a count variable equal to zero. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a node equal to the head of the list. And what we're going to do is we're going to move this head, we're going to move this node down through the list until we hit null. So while current, essentially while current is not none, we're going to move it along. So that means we're going to move the node along the list by one. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a check before that. So we're going to check if the data element at the node that we're currently on is equal to the data that we got passed into the function. If that's the case, then we can go ahead and increment our counter by one. Otherwise, we'll just progress and we'll move right along in the list. So at the end of this, we should have a count variable, which should be the number of times we've encountered the data element that we care about. So what all we have to do at this point is just return count. So let's go ahead and run the iterative version of this function on the list that we've created so far. So let's say list.print um, or count occurrences iterative, and we'll give it in one as the, as the node that we're looking for. So we'll go ahead and write that and then we'll give it a run. And I think I forgot to print out the content of what is returned in this function. So let me put a print statement around that, write it again, give it a run. And indeed we see that the number of times that we encountered one is four. Let's take another example. There's also um, it looks like there's, well, there's one, two in the list as well. Let's see how many times the function thinks that appears. So if we check for two, the number two only appears once in the list. Okay, so we have the iterative version of that function working. Let's think about how we can go about coding up the recursive implementation as well. So just as before, I also have a prototype for this function as well. This is the recursive implementation that takes the data that we're looking for and also the node. This node will be passed in initially to the function and will essentially move progressively through the list uh, each time we recursively call until we hit the base case. So basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be moving along through the list and we're going to check if that node, the data element at that node contains the data element that is passed in here. So really the base case in this scenario is if not node. So essentially if we've reached the end of the list. So if we've reached the end of the list, then we'll just return zero because there's no uh, data element at that particular node. So for that instance, we'll just return zero.
Otherwise, there's two conditions. So if node.data is equal to the data that's passed in, what we're going to do is we're going to return one plus a recursive call to this function. So we're going to say one plus self dot count occurrences recursive. And then we're going to pass in node.next because we're moving progressively along in this list. And then the data element that we're looking for doesn't change so that that stays the same. Otherwise, if the node, the data element at the node that we're on doesn't contain the data that we, we care about, we'll pretty much return almost the exact same thing, only we won't increment the account. So we'll just get rid of that one plus. And that pretty much does it for the recursive case. So again, just like before, let's go ahead and print list.count recursive. And then we'll put in uh, list.head. So this is the start of the list. This is where we'll start the um, where we'll start our iteration on the list and move along in the list. And then we'll pass in the data element that we care about. We'll keep it as one, just as we did initially before. So let me just move this back to one as well so we don't get confused. So let's go ahead and print out both of the cases of counts for iterative and recursive for the number one. So it looks like we get the same number for both iterative and recursive, which is reassuring that the number of times that the number one occurred is four times. So that pretty much does it for this video. If you have any questions or comments or anything else, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. Thank you again for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.